Everybody here has been super, super helpful. We went to pay, the owner turned around and said, it's on me. The guys at Scott Peterson Motors here, they didn't charge us for the service. Okay. I, I'm not expected to get this right first time. We're Marion and Chris. In 2018, we quit the nine to five and bought Trudy, our camper van. We are currently on an adventure to drive the circumference of the world. Well, all I can say is we've woken up and it's very blowy. There is a weather warning today for wind, but it's not going to stop us. No, no, no. We have a very exciting destination today. We are heading to the Devil's Tower. The door just got blown open with the wind. I nearly went flying. The sun is beautiful today, but boy, is it windy. I'm not sure wearing a baseball cap is a good idea today. I think I'll lose it. Right, let's hit the road. I'm super excited to go because <laughs> the mystery that surrounds it, I can't mm. wait to see it. Well, the wind's blowing up the dust today. It looks smoky, but it's not. It's all the, uh, all the dust blowing across the road. some big industrial plant here. I think it is some kind of uh, mining or... Just spotted a couple of the nodding donkeys, the, uh, you know, the oil pumps. We haven't seen those for a while, so they must have oil in Wyoming as well. Or maybe it's drawing gas out, I'm not sure. So when you come to these kind of things, you never quite know what to expect. We've seen the Devil Tower um, on movies, we've seen it on documentaries, like The Unexplained it was featured, and this huge pinnacle of rock. We've got 17 miles to go and we can't see it yet, and we're hoping it's gonna be as big and, and dramatic as they say it is. The landscape we were expecting from what we've seen online is it's really flat with this protruding mass, but it seems quite hilly. Okay, we're turning off. Uh, it's about 10 miles over there, but we still can't see it yet. Oh, we're just getting oh, a first glimpse of it over there. Oh, it is an odd shape. Whoa, it's windy, the door, my God. <laughs> I nearly lost the door. So here you go. This is the Devil's Tower. Absolutely amazing. I remember this tower from the famous movie, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Devil's Tower of Wyoming was the first national monument erected in this country by Theodore Roosevelt in 1915. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely watch it. Adds a bit of mystery to this tower, which they don't actually know how it was created. Scientists can't quite figure it out. The Devil's Tower is 1,267 feet tall, or 386 meters. It sits above the Belforce River. It's sacred to over 20 Native American tribes. It was designated as the US first national monument in 1906 by President Theodore Roosevelt because it was an object of scientific interest. It gets over half a million visitors a year, and some of them come here to do rock climbing. It's called Devil's Tower because Richard Dodge, who was a military escort for a scientific expedition into the Black Hills, journaled that the local indigenous people called this place Bad God's Tower, which loosely got translated into the Devil's Tower. So 
So apparently rock climbers that have climbed to the top of Devil Tower say that on the top there are actually grasses, cactus, and there's some wildlife, things like rats, chipmunks, and even snakes. How did they get up there? Well, that was absolutely amazing. And definitely one of my bucket lists ticked off from uh, Close Encounters, a big fan of that movie. Uh, if you've seen it, let me know. I think it came out in 1979, 1980, uh, but you should definitely uh, go check it out if you haven't seen it. I have a confession. Oh, uh, you haven't seen it? I haven't seen it. What? I feel a Netflix night coming on, Marion. <laughs> This is a fun little town we're just driving through here, look. Fine arts and antiques. There's an old trading post. I think you just imagine this kind of place to be in somewhere <laughs> in Texas. The old bank, like, with the, the skull on the front. Ponderosa Cafe. Welcome to Aladdin. Population 15, and uh, apparently this town has something a little bit special that we're going to stop at as we're uh, as we're driving through. Your destination is on the left. There you go. We are here. I think this is it, or is this somebody's house? No. Oh no, this is it. This is it. So back in the day, the town of Aladdin. It was a it was a mining town, and it had a population of about 500 people. Like I said, nowadays it's only got 15. But this is the remnants of an old tipple. It was actually used for coal and to sort the coal. The coal would be shoved down the chute at the top and there would be grills and grates with buckets underneath that would collect the peanut sized ones, the egg sized ones and the larger ones and they, it would all be sorted on the tipple. It's a fascinating piece of history and apparently one of the last remaining relics of the coal industry in this area. Based on today's weather forecast with strong winds and weather warnings and snow forecast, who knows? It looks like it could fall down at any time. Maybe we will be one of the last people to see it standing. Welcome to South Dakota. <laughs> we are just arriving in South Dakota and uh, we've got a few things to do whilst we're here. We're heading to the nearby town of... Belfouche? I think that's how you pronounce it. Because Trudy's got some minor repairs that she needs doing, which we'll show you. And also we've taken advantage of one of Marianne's sister Sue's friend's addresses to get a package delivered. Oh yes, thanks Sue. Welcome to Belfouche. We're just arriving into the town. And the first stop we're looking for is an RV repair shop. Oh, oh yeah, progress. progress RV in there. Loads of RVs. It's so alright, Trudy, we're not trading you in. <laughs> Never trade Trudy in. Not gonna happen. We're just gonna get you. Uh, a little bit of tender loving care. A little patch up job. So if you're wondering why we've come to an RV repair, you may remember a few months ago we had problem with the roof hatch and that you could actually see daylight around. Well it started to come loose again around here and uh, with the, all the bad weather and winter coming we just thought we should probably get it professionally looked at. So we're going to go and see if they'll be able to reset it for us. Let me see whether uh, I know they're in the process of moving stuff around. No worries, yeah. thank you. I love gadgets. We've seen all the stuff. <laughs> Soda panels. Super helpful, guys. They've also given us a contact to try and repair our cracked windscreen. So they've, uh, they've asked us to drive round to the workshop and uh, have a look. They did look a bit horrified when I said it's not screwed down, it's just like sycophlexed, stuck down. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. They'll give us an assessment on it. Up on there. There he is. Okay. 
Okay, so it's this one right here. Yeah. Yeah, it's that one there. Um, and it's the front, so it's that front bit there. Okay, so the guys are going to try and uh, clamp this down for us and do a little bit of resealing. But everybody here has been super, super helpful and made us feel super welcome. <laughs> so we want to give a massive shout out to Progress RV here in Belfouche. South Dakota, baby. They literally did the work. We went to pay and uh, the owner turned around and said, it's on me. Your travels are amazing. Happy travels. I cannot believe it. So the roof hatch is fixed. What a great start to South Dakota. Too kind and the gratitude for us putting the videos out. We just love sharing our adventures Amazing. and we love that you guys want to come with us. So for somebody to thank us like that is just really sweet. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, we had a fabulous night last night with our friends, uh, Susan and Scott. We went out for a great uh, dinner in a local town near here. And we got to experience what it was like living on a ranch here in South Dakota. Chris and they're, Hi. They're, they're, are you called <laughs> London home or? Uh... Wow, England. Okay. Oh. Very nice horse. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Wow. He's a youngster. You're breaking training. Well, he's not too terribly young, but yeah, we're training just him up. Gonna, yeah, gonna start and <laughs> rope and steers on him. Somebody wants to play. This is where he's yeah. me. Ah. Uh, what do you use these for? Oh, uh, you. Are you supposed to sit on that? No. I was gonna say it looks like you're gonna sit on it and like. Somebody will pull it around and then on a horse. If oh, yep. Younger one, you start. Show him. Show him. Show him. Are you gonna give us a demo? Yeah. If you guys want to pull it around on you or something? Oh really? <gasps> oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> we got real stuff going on now. Real cowboy stuff. <laughs> So we're at Belfouche with the lovely Peterson family who are just really welcoming us into their home and showing them what they get up to. Oh, That's Jamie on that grey horse. Yep. So she roped that calf in the back. Yep. Now she'll pull him out. Yep. And the training horses roping the bit the, the cattle. He makes that look easy. I can't even like finger knit with my fingers and yet he's managed to hit a moving target and lasso it. That is incredible. Not a bad first day in South Dakota here. That is for sure. Marianne's going to be doing a bit of roping, I think. Okay. I, I'm not expected to get this right first time. So you, you actually swing it yep. over your head. Thank you. Okay. Comes around you. Just like an extension of your arm, basically. Oh, yeah. It gets wider and then you just let it go. And you do it sort of like that. Yeah. yeah. Is that? Okay. Get a lot closer. Get, get go closer. right up to it. Get right up by it. Keep going. Oh, no way! <laughs> she did it. First time ever. Oh my, oh my goodness, God. love. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> I can't say I've seen many You're people pick up a rope. No, really? <laughs> what the hell? So now Chris is going to show me how it should be done, obviously. Like that. That's it. Yep. You've got this. <laughs> Bottom. <laughs> he got its bum. It, I would have got its tail. I would have his got bum. its tail. So this morning we're heading to um, a local garage, Scott Peterson Ford dealer, uh, which used to be owned um, by Scott and Susan, and they very kindly offered to have a look at Trudy and just check her little rattle to make sure everything is okay. Um, as we always say, it's better to be safe than sorry. And uh, we rely on this vehicle so much to get us where we need to go that we need to make sure she's fit and healthy. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna go and get it checked out now. 
They do forecast snow today and compared to yesterday, the weather has turned really, really quickly. It was uh, minus last night and it fills it, hence the woolly hat. Okay, so it should be just down here on the left at the top of the hill. Oh, it's a cool old fire truck. It's a very nice town. Your destination is on the left. And here we are. Scott Peterson Motors. Morning. It's snowing. It has just started it snowing. It is actually snowing. Okay, so we're leaving the keys uh, with Brian, the head mechanic. He's going to take Trudy for a little spin, listen to the rattle, and uh, then it will all be good. We've got our bag, so we'll go and sit inside and work while she's being looked at. Okay, so the guys have... Uh, just come in they said they've tightened a few things they just want marianne to take it for a little test run just to check there is uh they've solved the rattle but maybe it's a simple thing of tightening something up <laughs> fortunately it was just a loose bolt or nut or something so they've tightened it up he also said to me brian the guy um who came out with me and has been looking after trudy he said to me but i haven't quite finished because there's like cable ties and bits of things <laughs> just she's held together off. with duct tape <laughs> and i was like oh actually that's me <laughs> because obviously on the dempster highway as you know if you're following us bits were falling off and and uh, he was also laughing that we only have one mud flap left <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely amazing. The guys at Scott Peterson Motors here. They didn't charge us for the service. Why is everyone in this town so damn lovely? You guys! <laughs> okay, so he's tightened the bolts. It's Trudy is all good. There's no major problems, but the steering boot is a little bit dry and a bit decayed. And rotted. Rotted. So that's yeah. what's causing the rattle, we think, is the steering boot. Um, we'll have to wait until we get to Australia. It's not going to cause any major damage for, for, for now. So the at side, least we know what it is. And the side door has dropped a little bit, which creates a little bit of a... Ooh. Uh, so, so <laughs> that's the Dempster we, Highway. When we get to Australia, where they have Trudy vans, um, we're going to have to find someone and who wants yeah. to work with us to really get everything sorted. Okay, so we've come down to Frontier Glass and uh, we'll give this a bash. We don't have an appointment, but we'll try our luck. You never know, we might get lucky. What I'm basically going to do is drill through the first layer of glass okay. and then uh, after that, I'll grab a different deal and put it on there and it'll have a resin in it and that will force into the chip. Oh, amazing. And uh, then when it gets all done, I'll heat it up a little bit, but when it gets all done, I use an ultraviolet light. And that here. stops it yep. getting worse. Mm -hmm. I know. That's just a polish there, yep. Hey, you've done this before. Just learning. <laughs> You're a very good student. The first one I've screwed up. <laughs> it's so cool. fixed. It's now just a small mark rather than a chip. Amazing. Forty-seven dollars later, we are fixed. Thanks, Roger. You can't see it. A fabulous job. A happy customer.